Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another LEGO Extra Pieces live stream. I've not done one of these since I think I checked it was August or September of last year. So it's been a while. We are back with a bunch of new people. Some people, I think everyone on here has been on one of these at one point in time. But just to go back and introduce everyone, Matt, you want to start with your channel, where everyone can find you and all that good stuff. All right, guys. So I am Bricktail Studios on social media. I have an Instagram as well as a Twitter in addition to my YouTube. Um, name's the same across all of them. I think with the exception of Twitter, drop the S at the end because not enough characters. But uh, yeah, I am a stop motion animator specializing in mostly Star Wars stuff. Check me out. Awesome. Yeah. So that's Matt, guys. And then we got Marcus. You want to introduce yourself? Hey, guys. Marcus here. Long time no see. Um... You can find me at uh, YouTube, Marcus Foon. Last name is pronounced P-H-O-O-N. I uh, I also do Lego stop motion, but uh, I haven't done anything quite recent, but I'm trying to get back into it. Sounds good. All right, Stuart, you're up. Well, uh, I'm Star Wars Studio 100. Uh, you can just find me on YouTube at Star Wars Studio, Star Wars Studio 100. Um, I have also a Flickr, Twitter, uh, Facebook. Uh, the descriptions are all on my channel. Uh, I also do um, stop motions, mostly war or uh, zombie related. And um, yeah, I'm currently busy with another one. So um, stay tuned for that. All right. So that's everyone on here. I see we already got a good amount of people. I, I, I didn't post anywhere, but on I'm starting to use Snapchat more on my business account. So that's the only place I told people we're going to be actually doing this live stream. So I'm gonna post something on Instagram here in a second, but we got about 25, 30 people watching already. So guys, we're gonna be talking about, I have some topics here, but once we get, we might get through, the, get through all those pretty quickly. So we might ask you guys some questions in the chat, but uh, I guess we're just gonna go and start off with what are you guys working on? So I guess we can start with Matt, what's new with you? I know you do animations, so are you working on anything? So right now I'm kind of in a transition period. Uh, I just got back from Brookworld Chicago a couple days ago. I mean, when I say I got back, I'm like 45 minutes away from the convention center uh, in Chicago. So that convention was an absolute blast. Uh, I did manage to get into Rebelug uh, as an animator, no less, which is really cool. Uh, so I'm starting to kind of uh, get myself famili uh, familiarized with the lug and uh, we're starting to talk about collaborations going forward. Uh, so I'm going to have to figure out where that kind of fits into my plans for the coming year. Uh, otherwise, uh, my studio is an absolute disaster right now. So I haven't really been able to do a whole lot of animation lately. Um, working on getting that cleaned up. As soon as I do, we can start talking about uh, Republic at War Part 2. It has no real relation to, uh, to Part 1 or Zero Hour, whatever you want to refer to it as. Um, not going to continue with the commandos theme as much as people kind of want me to maybe, uh, to give you kind of a preface for what this is going to be. It's going to be kind of another, um, story that follows a legends video game, uh, same kind of format. Uh, this is the old 2002 clone wars game that featured the evacuation from Renbar. That's the original appearance of the planet. And, uh, that game originally featured the Republic fighter tank. If those of you who are older like me uh, might remember it. So uh, it should be very cool. Sounds pretty awesome. Marcus, I know you, I saw you on Instagram. I think it was Instagram post something recently, and you've been kind of MIA for a while. So what's new with you? Um, I've been just doing a lot of test animations, not really working on anything. I have something in planned, but it, I haven't touched on it yet. It's going into production, hopefully starting Monday. But that's okay. about it for me. Okay. But what you are working on things now. Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. That's good to hear. All right. Stuart, what about you? I know you said you were animating when you hopped on here. Yeah, I'm uh, currently animating uh, Outbreak Part uh, 3 because uh, many people requested that. Um, after Outbreak Part 3, I'm going to work on uh, Jacqueline's, Jacqueline's Letter. Uh, it's a more um, complicated story set in uh, Western Europe in the period of the Second World War. Uh, it's about, um, uh, it's about uh, a German soldier who uh, accidentally defected his unit, uh, a Jewish girl with a mysterious letter, and a cocky U.S. soldier. That sounds really interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a more of a, a of a travel story in a more um, post-apocalyptic World War II setting. So 
So basically, okay. you will see uh, uh, ruins everywhere, uh, burned out vehicles, uh, dead soldiers. Okay. Interesting. All right. Uh, yeah. Well, sounds like everyone's actually back in action and working on things. I know over the past, what, I want to say six months, everyone's kind of been slowed down, at least from what I've seen. But I think now that it's summer, we're kind of picking things back up. Yeah, I mean, I, I, have, I haven't posted in four months. Yeah, so. Cough a year. Cough. Yeah. yeah. Damn, damn. My, my yeah, it's been about, about six, seven months for me. But then again, that's that's usually how often you get a, a major brick film out of me. Yeah. yeah I mean, I mean zero, zero hour did pay it off. Yo, it did. Zero hour it absolutely good. did. Yeah, All I right. got to that off in person at Brick World, and uh, yeah, it's nice to see people react in person. Yeah, for sure. I guess I'm going to do these topics out of order because you mentioned Brick World, and one of my questions or topics was, what LEGO conventions are you guys going to that are coming up? So I know, Matt, you said Brick World Chicago. Was that last weekend or two weekends ago? So that was uh, the weekend of June 16th and 17th were okay. the, the public days. So let's see. Yeah, that would have put it second week of June if okay. you don't count that that Friday on the first. So how was that? So that was an absolute blast. So for those you know who may have been following me for a long time back when I was known as LSW Stories Animations, I displayed two years in a row, 2011 and 2012, I believe at uh, brick world chicago and back then i was just kind of by myself i had my own little table uh you know with uh, my monitor with an animation reel on it and you know just a couple mocks here and there that i brought uh this year was totally different uh, i actually got to even though i wasn't part of the group yet i got to display with rebel lug um and that was awesome because for the first time i actually got to hang out with a group of guys who i actually kind of know i mean I, I know a good chunk of rebel lug as it was um, now I pretty much know everybody, all of them, fantastic guys. Um, would definitely recommend you go to the website, see who they are, check out their channels. Fantastic. But, uh, yeah, that was the big difference this time around was actually being able to hang out with people in person who, you know, are the same age and really share the hobby. And, uh, it's, it's just awesome. I, I can't say enough good stuff about that. That sounds good. So you definitely made more connections and got some closer friend relationships going. Yeah, and it wasn't just Lego stuff too. We uh, we did a, a stint at Feed My Starving Children. That's a, a charity uh, that's based out of Chicago, I think. Don't quote me on that. And then uh, we also did some other stuff, like we went bowling. That was a blast. Yeah, if you go to um, MNR Productions vlog channel, you can actually see some of the uh, the exploits in his vlogs from Brick World. Okay. Yeah, he followed Rebel Lug around for most of the time. So yeah, it was it was an awesome time. Can't say yeah. enough good stuff. Yeah, I think hopefully next year I'll be going to that one if I get a vendor table. So that's the only reason I wasn't able to go this year. But uh, that's definitely on my list of one of them to stop by for sure. That'd be great because, you know, I, while I haven't been displaying at the convention, you know, in past years recently, I have been there and the vendors have been pretty much the same for a number yeah. of years. So to have you kind of thrown into the mix with your unique selection of products would be uh, a really good thing to see, honestly. Yeah, that's. I'm hoping to get in. Everyone that I've talked to at the convention that works there say you got a good chance because I've been on the wait list. And uh, yeah, like they said, you know, once you're kind of in, most people don't leave, so it's hard to get some variety. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. Yeah. So, all right. Well, what are you going to any uh, conventions, or is that just the one that you go to because it's close by? Uh, that's typically the one I go to. This year, Brick Fair Virginia is a maybe. We're we're still figuring out whether or not that's a thing I can make happen. It's less than a month from now. Yep. Um, we'll see. Okay. Uh, my hope is that I will be there, at the very least on the public days. Uh, my family might want to come with and make a vacation out of D.C. because it's yep. there. So we'll see. Okay, yeah, that's... I'm definitely going to that. I know, I think, Marcus, you're going to that as well. Uh, there might be some uh, change in plans. Oh, there better not be. Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. oh, no. It is Brick Fair, and <laughs> my boss is like, uh, maybe no. I'm like, we'll see. Wait, are you still working at the Lego store at the mall there? <laughs> yeah, are you? Still? 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the enthusiastic reply to that? <laughs> I've I've just like yeah, um yeah, I'm just trying to figure out if I could like um maybe work a closing or opening shift. Probably closing would be best on the Saturday so that way I could like go there in the morning and afternoon. I mean, that yeah. being said, if you um if you get like the full registration or whatever fair calls that, you know, you've got like think Thursday through Sunday, right? That's no, Wednesday, actually. Yeah, Wednesday. But isn't that like for like the showings though? That's like, just for, for like presenters? private attendees. Yeah. Which that's something I would definitely recommend to people watching. If you can, uh, basically register for the private days because it is so much more enjoyable to get to walk the floor of the convention while there isn't just a zoo of people everywhere, you yeah. know, basically climbing over each other to get a look at stuff. Yeah. And that's the $85 one, right? Uh, I, for, I think it's like 80 85 for Brickworld, but that actually, you don't need to, that's the full registration. That's the one that actually allows you to display. I think it only costs $50 for a single person just to get into the private days. Yeah, I think it's 50 60 or something like that. Okay, I'm going a, I'm to a go do that right now. Yeah, so I guess I'll just kind of answer this. I'm going there, and I should be getting there. Oh, boy, I think... Friday, I am I getting there Friday? I don't know. It's either Friday morning or Friday night, but I'll be there for the whole weekend for sure, the public days, because I'll be vending. And I'm actually taking my cousin Jackson. I don't know if you guys are, I know Marcus will remember his <laughs> name. Um, uh, he's been on the podcast or the live stream before. So it's just going to be me and him. We're flying out there. And uh, hopefully, hopefully it's a crazy convention because that's always good. All right. What nice. about I know Stuart since you're not in the US. Yeah, I haven't been to a Lego convention for a long time, but uh -huh. I went to a local one uh, once actually. So that was uh, so far my own the only Lego convention I, I ever went. It's called Lego World. Okay. Is that but, directly tied to the Lego company itself or is that a third party? I think it's a third party but i'm not sure okay that's strange because i think lego typically you know legally speaking they want to make sure that their name isn't used for any of this that's stuff. what i was wondering yeah even though typically they do end up sponsoring some of the bigger conventions like you know usually they'll have a, like a i know the legoland discovery center had a booth at uh, brick world this year okay yeah that's where we found all of those uh two and a half buck uh scarif trooper poly bags Oh, oh, that's where you got those from. Yeah, like, oh. yeah, you can see. I think uh, Danny Lego Buff Productions ended up getting sixty of them. Like they were just they were selling them by the box, actually. So and there was like forty to a box. So Danny's just like, oh hey, look, boxes grabs two. So yeah, I think Ryan got thirty. I got like twenty. I need to look this up. Oh, the yeah, tan just, one. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty so, cool. That was probably the deal at Brickworld this year. Yeah. No, that's that's pretty crazy. I'm looking at it right now. Let's see here. Yeah, so I mean, I'm going to Brick Fair, which is in less than a month, and then I'm actually going to this coming weekend Bricks by the Bay in California. I've been there once before. That was my first Lego convention, actually, in 2011. I wasn't a vendor at the time, but that was my first Lego convention. I flew there. So it'll be interesting because what Bricks by the Bay has done in the past is they've only had one public day. And so as a vendor, that's kind of a deterrent to fly somewhere for one public day because it's got to be a really good public day for it to be cost effective. And so they finally made it two public days so i figured i'll give it a shot so that's this coming weekend and then let's see BrickCon is in october and that's local to me that's 30 minutes away so i always go to that one so i know a lot of the guys in the chat i've been seeing BrickCon pop up every now and then so i will be going to that one as well so i got three conventions left this year but they're coming up pretty fast is BrickCon still like an 18 and older thing like only for a falls that's a good good question i think if you're a private attendee you could be any age 
All right, that makes sense. Yeah, because I know when that was happening, there was some drama with us, like my group, because we were all like 16 and 15. Um, I think you just, I think what it was is you just need like an adult to get in the door or something. I don't know. It was really weird. All right. So well, that makes sense because if you're, really... like, you're registered for the private days, you have to be accompanied by an adult. With yeah. A register, uh, register if you're under 18. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's a great convention. And then, I mean, so yeah, that kind of covers conventions for the year. There's a couple others that I was going to go to, but I decided not to. But yeah, so let's see. All right, so I'm kind of doing these topics in reverse, but we're going to go back to the top. And so this one, I don't know why this came to mind, but I was looking on Google and I also got an email through my YouTube email. Have you guys seen the new play button design? I have not. Not yet, not nope. yet. No, nope. look look it up. It is I want to I want to talk about this cuz I think I All have right, my right. personal opinions on it, but I want to hear what you guys think. New YouTube play design. Right. Let's see. I got a picture pulled up here. Let's see if I can get the screen sharing. Yo, wait, what? Yep. Let's see. No. Yo, wait. It. What was this? Three? No, wait. this is three months ago. This is. Oh, not... man. Huh. Am I looking at the That's right interesting. one? Interesting. I'm showing it on screen right now. If you... Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I am looking at the right thing. Yeah, yeah. At first, I'm like, okay, this looks like just, you know, something that somebody photoshopped real quick. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Edge yourself. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, that's this, a... is, this is interesting. So um, I don't know when I got this email. It was a while ago, but that people are getting these new ones recently. Like it's official. Oh. Yeah. Um, I don't know. See, that's the thing. Why? Why did Why did change? A good thing. Yeah. So yeah. from my point of view, right? And I even think I'm looking at the diamond play button. It looks smaller to me. It does. I think it's smaller. Cutting on cost. Exactly. That's no. That's literally what it is. So yeah. I don't think YouTube realized that they were going to explode. I don't remember when they started giving these out, but I think what it was four years ago or something. Yeah, that I might guess. be something to look up. But yeah, I I don't think they realized that they were going to have to give out a lot of them and those display boxes and that custom al aluminum and then. You know, not, I don't think it was actually silver plated, but it was like chrome plated. But that I think they just realized that it costs too much. And like any company, they try to figure a cheaper way to do them. Yeah, I, I, also, I also saw that the quality of these uh, of these play buttons went down over the course of years, actually. Yeah. And they've actually the original ones actually they made them smaller. I saw a YouTube channel that has like five channels that all have over a hundred thousand he got all four that were the original size and then the silver the same silver one was just a little bit smaller so it kind of annoyed him because he was hanging them on his wall i see yeah yeah i mean that being said though i mean so youtube as a company is still after all these years in the red youtube has yet to turn a a formal profit because I guess you know, running all of these um, these uh, these server farms that all of the videos are hosted on, yep. it just costs more than all of the ad revenue brings in from it. Oh yeah. So yep. that being said, though, is manufacturing those really causing them to take that much more of a hit? Like, is it significant? I wonder. I honestly think that. Part of the reason they did this was also because they realized if someone over a hundred thousand subscribers, and this is also why I think that they don't mm -hmm. do one for like ten thousand, is the reason that they're doing it a hundred thousand and a million and ten million is because if you have that many people watching your videos, I think it's pretty much by default everybody does a one specific video on unboxing this, and that's one video that. Oh, let's say a hundred thousand people may or may not see that's dedicated to advertising YouTube. 
it's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah, and, yeah. And agree. also, it's like if you have like alternate channels. Yep. And they all reach yeah. a million. You just get like four of the same one. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I think that if if that's their goal, I think it's kind of smart because you know as a way to draw creators to the platform. You know, creators who don't necessarily already have a platform. Yeah. Because the idea is that you know you know let, let's let's take our community for example. Um, you know, say when you find yourself at a hundred thousand subscribers, you know. The Lego community is a niche community. It's not huge, but yet at the same time, here you are with 100,000 subscribers. Yeah. And what that says to people watching is, you know what? Hey, maybe I can do that too. Because, you know, if this guy had half that many subs, you know, a year and a half ago, yep. you know, what's to say that I can't do the yep. same? Yeah. And that's, once again, more incentive for them to do, make a YouTube channel, and then it's, you know, helping YouTube out as a company. So so I personally, I don't like it, but the design itself is slowly growing on me just because it's like, you know, that's what you're going to get. So it probably will change by, it'll change again, I bet. So yeah, to me, it, it just kind of looks funny because it, it almost looks like somebody stepped on it. <laughs> no, yeah, and I think that's why a lot of people like the old one is because it was a full-on shadow box with some depth to it. Yeah. Instead of just a plaque. It's uh, it's a lot more uh, hang-on-wall-ready, so to speak. Yes. 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 Yeah, I agree. Which is kind of unfortunate, but, you know... It is what it is. I personally think they should give us the option to pick, but I know that just creates way more havoc than they want to deal with. Yes. Yeah, maybe the change itself was just kind of out there so that, you know, they could make a couple headlines and say, you know, like, oh, hey, yeah, you know, YouTube still has this th as a thing, yeah. you know, something to aspire to. Yeah, but... Like I said, I personally think that the main reason was just cost reduction. It's unfortunate. Yeah, or, or, but... yeah. yeah maybe the production of these kinds of uh, new uh, playbuns are much easier than the previous ones. Yeah, I I definitely believe they are. So oh, this is this is interesting. Uh, yeah. So actually, uh, since I had Google Images open with that, uh, yeah. apparently uh, Zasi Nambi uh, Nambi's actually created a Lego version of yep. the Play Button Award. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I kind of like that better than the new one. Yeah. So I thought it'd be interesting. I mean, I wasn't. I was expecting some of you guys to see it, but none of you had seen it, so that was actually yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> Live reaction. Yeah. Really. Yeah. So I don't know. I think it's interesting. I thought it'd be interesting to talk about. So. Yeah. Yeah. This is pretty interesting. So I guess that brings me to my next question. Let's see, or topic. Oh, let's see. I had thought of something while we were talking about this. What was it? Let's see here. Oh, yeah. So we were talking about this as far as people creating YouTube channels and trying to go for these goals. And I had thought of, what are your, because I got this question on my Ask Me Anything I did a couple weeks back. And he was talking about YouTube partnership and how do you get that more or less so you can start making money on your YouTube videos. And I don't know if you guys got the memo, but the, I, I think everyone here has AdSense, right? Yes. Uh, I, I have at least. Okay. Yes. And supposedly the rules to get that now have changed drastically. Really? Yeah. Yes. yeah. I, I thought that it was only about only with YouTube. So I, I'm not, don't quote me, but you could probably look this up, but now there's like, you need at least a hundred thousand views and like a thousand subscribers or something like that. Oh, yeah, oh, that, yeah, oh that, that one. I believe that's accurate. Okay. A thousand, a thousand lifetime views or yeah. no, no, actually I think it's total. No, wait, wait, four, four K, uh, min, four K minutes uh, or something. Four K hours of watch time oh, oh, within, oh. within the past 12 months. Really? So there's even yeah. a time cap on it. Yeah. Huh, I did not know that. Yeah, basically they're trying to make sure that it's a a quality, 
regularly uploading channel. Yeah. Yeah, but stop motion channels can't survive with uh, with these kinds of rules. Luckily, oh, right. you're grandfathered yeah. in, but for new people, it's going to be very depending I mean, on what you do. That being said, though, that being said, though, we, you know, you say grandfathered in, not everybody no. received that luxury because, you know, like 90 to 95% of the people I know in the brick filming community had their channels demonetized after these requirements were put into place. Really? And, yep, and again, yeah. it's just this, this whole nonsensical thing with, um, again, trying to, you know, YouTube's cracked down on quote unquote hate speech and the like, basically they, they're, they're afraid of advertisers fleeing them and boycotting them. If, you know, ads show up alongside inappropriate content. I did not know that for certain people, they actually got reverted because of the rules. Yeah, basically, if you, like, at the time of the change, if you did not meet those requirements as it currently was, your channel was demonetized. Until you get there again. Yeah, yep. so as yep. far as some of the up-and-coming brick filmers, um, you know, with, like, still under, like, 100k subs, uh, me and Austin, I think, were actually really the two people, the two, only two people I know in the brick filming community. Oh, and Stuart, obviously, well, yeah. many more subs than us. Um <laughs> Basically, everyone else got demonetized except for the two of us, as far as I'm aware. And really? that, like, you know, it it, it yeah. sucked because you know I, I I look at these other people as my peers who are making equally good content, and it's it's unfortunate to see that just because their channel didn't get the attention that it may have deserved, that they got the axe. And now that their incentive to keep going is lessened. Yeah, that's yeah, de that's definitely true. Yeah, that's pretty demotivating. Yeah. One thing I will say is that, so as somebody who was driven nuts by YouTube back in the day, because like, in spite, like people, people with far lower sub counts than me would get partnered way back in the day when you actually had to submit an application to be partnered yeah. and, you know, do all this, that, and the other junk. Um, and basically then the way I finally got in was basically when they gave it to everybody pretty much. Mm -hmm. I think, I think first they started like picking out individual videos that had gone quote unquote viral enough to be worthy of monetization. And then for the people who had gotten those on a couple of videos, they kind of gradually shifted it to where, okay, we'll just kind of, you know, slide you into the partnership program. And then they gave it to everybody. Yeah. When they gave it to everybody that, that kind of resonated with me. It's like, okay, well, part of the fun of you know being on youtube making youtube videos trying to grow a channel you know to get the attention of youtube to show them that you were worthy of monetization i actually kind of liked the chase of that you know the thrill of of seeking that mm -hmm. in spite of the fact that i routinely got shot down over and over and over again are so, you referring to Let's see. I might have missed misheard you, but are you referring to when you had to apply? And yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Basically, when you actually had to apply, and again, the standards. What, what I like about how it is now is that at least the standards are clear. Yeah. Back then, you know, again, like I'm like, okay, well, why aren't I getting partnered? People exactly. with half the subs that I have are getting partnered. Exactly. Um, yeah. And yeah, it was just really confusing, and it just kind of made you feel like you were being singled out if you didn't get in. Yep. But again now the requirements are a bit more straightforward so you meet those requirements congratulations you are in and i don't know of anybody that has recently got in with those new requirements i'm curious how they were notified if all of a sudden it was just unlocked on their channel i know there's a spot on the channel where it says if you're in good standing and it says all these other features that you're qualified for or not maybe it's under there yeah, you know what? I actually haven't got a chance to ask uh, Tom Scorchbricks about this because I know that uh, he recently... Yeah, his channel went way up. Yeah, back in May, he released Dead Space, and that was a phenomenally nostalgic brick film. Oh, that was great. And yeah, we after, of after that, that, his channel just took off. Like, it, literally in the course of, like, the past two months, he's gained, like, he's doubled his sub count to, like, 18,000. It's probably, like, at 2K by now. And, um, almost two okay. so around 18, 1800 or something. Yeah, and, and, and that video, that video alone managed to get his like 
you know, surpassed zero oh, hour in views uh, in, in two months, whereas it's taken about six to get to where zero, uh, zero hour currently is. So I have to imagine that he's hit, at least sort of hit that, uh, that threshold for uh, the viewer or viewership hours or whatever. So I don't know, maybe he's gotten that back since because uh, he was demonetized. And again, I don't know if he's gotten it back yet, but it would be interesting to know if he did. Yeah, I'd like to talk to him, see wh how that actually happened. Because like you said, back in the day, I remember this so vividly too, is you'd, I, I was sitting down and I was applying for this and they were the most random questions. And you had to like write a description of why you think you should get in. And like all these other things that you... I personally don't see why they needed to know that, but it was like, okay. And like you said, people that are making barely any views or anything are getting it. <laughs> why am I not getting it? And I like the fact that it's clear now, but I'm still curious on that transition to when you actually get it. Is it actually obvious or do you have to activate it? You know, what do you have to do? My guess would be that, you know, you'll you'll get a message through YouTube and then also probably to your connected email account. Yeah. And it'll be like, hey, you qualify for the YouTube partnership program. Click here to sign up in like an AdSense account, you know? Yeah. So I'm, I'd like to talk to Tom, see maybe he's done that. Maybe he's gotten there yet. I don't know. I'll ask him right now, actually. Okay. He is going to sleep, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, time time zones. He'll, he'll he'll see it when he wakes up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's well, funny because when I like, I actually tried to sign up for the AdSense program like a while back, like maybe back in like um, what you call it? The old days. The no, old no, no, no. Like maybe November, October. <laughs> okay. Or no, um, I think it was around February, and then like literally one week later, they announced the new rules of like why yeah yeah the universe is totally against you marcus i know oh my god <laughs> so i thought i thought the whole change like i said i got that question asked and i had to kind of it was you know i had to say the requirements offhand and i think i got them semi-accurate so i know there's some google page that i saw that tells all of those but uh, I thought it'd be interesting to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It is pretty interesting. So I think that's the, let's see, that's the last YouTube related topic I have. But let's see, let's go to the next one here. So we talked about Lego conventions. We talked about the new YouTube play button so far. Random question. This is kind of a quick one, but when and what was the last Lego set that you guys bought? Uh, oh, uh, I thought of this while I was printing some figures today. I'm like, I'm going to do a live stream later. What's a good question? Oh, yeah. Ooh, the last Lego set I bought, uh, it was the Patrol Battle Pack from, uh, from, the, from the Han Solo movie. Okay. <laughs> Same here. Same here. Let me look uh, that up. I don't know which one that is. I bought so much this week. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, boy. No VIP. oh boy. But I bought the last thing I bought, which was earlier today, was in Ninjago City. Okay. Oh nice. Oh damn. Yeah. Yeah, that that is a really good set, you know, and even if you get tired of it, you know, as it's built, you know, as a brick filmer, there's tons of useful pieces in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, Marcus, did you buy that for the actual parts, or were you actually going to build it? I was going to actually build it. Okay. Yeah, I don't think... What was the last set I bought? Oh, boy. The last set that I personally bought, not that uh, I got from a relative for, let's say, like, birthday or Christmas, probably... Oh, I don't know. I don't even think I bought this, but the Millennium Falcon from Episode 7... Oh, that yo, that was oh, wow. old. Yeah, that's yeah. a couple of years back. Yeah, I I never had a Millennium Falcon, and I was like, you know what, this is the time. Oh, actually, no, I take that back. I bought the Sand Crawler, um, the UCS. Oh, but I I I'm keeping right. it in the box so for yeah. investment purposes, but. 
generally speaking these days aside from the yearly modular building and possibly like a lego ideas set um like i think i bought the uh, the old fishing store still haven't opened that one up yet i'm kind of sitting on it to see what happens with that uh not something i typically do either yeah so i just don't have a space mm -hmm. for it right now and i bought it for a future lego city project but yeah, generally speaking, it's usually the battle packs for me, just to get my hands on some of the new figures. Yep, uh, yep. Yeah, I know I for agree. a while in college, I was in a dark age, didn't really buy a whole lot of Lego, wasn't really doing anything, certainly wasn't uploading to my channel. And there were a couple battle packs there that I wish I had gotten more of, namely the 212th and Kashyyyk Trooper battle packs. Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah, I see. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people it was the same for, and you know, I I still see people looking for those specific figures. Yeah, I remember that summer very specifically when those two sets came out. I was buying, I went to Target and I cleared them out. I bought like twenty of each, and it was the that was when I was doing my Bricklink store, and those p figures were so popular then that I could put the figures up on Bricklink. Before I even had the sets, they would sell, and I'd have enough money to go buy the sets. So it's just like <laughs> oh, a constant cycle. I just need more sets for the figures. Um, and I was just parting those sets out. I remember me and my friend, uh, 27 Lego Kid or Hunter, we were doing that both. And, man, we were making a killing that summer. Nice. Yeah. yeah and another thing I had thought of the other day was, right, so – not only when and what was the last Lego set, but I remember like when was that one that one uh, Clone Trooper Battle Pack, the that original one with the Walker that everyone bought, uh, two thousand eight, right? Ooh, damn! Was that the one? Sounds from... about right, two thousand eight or two thousand nine. Yeah, it was. It came with yeah. like three white figures and then the Gunner. Yep. Wait, what, what's the question? I'm trying to think what year that Battle Pack was. Oh no. Did you mean Revenge of the CF one? No, it was the uh, Clone Wars one. Oh. Ooh, you got me there. I believe it was 2008, 2009. Anyways, that's beside the point. But back in those days, I remember like every season Lego would come out with, let's say for Star Wars, for example, they would come out with like one large $100 set, maybe a $75, a $50, maybe a $20, and then two battle packs, right? Yep. So it was always like six sets. And I remember I would always buy one of each at least. And then probably multiple battle packs. I remember vividly every season going to the store and doing that. And I don't know about you guys, but recently Lego's just been producing so much. Oh my God. They have. Oh, yeah. oh, the number of sets oh, has man. ballooned. And I know Marcus will definitely know this with the inventory he probably deals with at work. But <laughs> like I am... I, there, I remember there was a point, like maybe 2012 or something. It was like I just don't have the money to keep up with this, and now it's like insane. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I don't know, Marcus, if you have any insight on that. Unfortunately, I can't say much because uh, things. Well, I know, but like papers. as far as work, you know, obviously you're dealing with all of that. Um, yeah, no, oh my god. I mean, I'm on the same same side as you guys are. I'm just like, why are they, like, doing so much? And I'm looking at their site right now. Is uh -huh. You can see, like, all the coming soon things. I'm just like, holy cow. Like, especially the Brickheads. Especially the Brickheads. That, that was something I was shocked when they came out with. And supposedly, they're pretty popular. I yeah, would I say... Part, at least part of the reason for the popularity of the Brickheads is because they've introduced a lot of new, unique pieces yep. to uh, to yeah, the aftermarket. I know um, at Brick World, one of the really cool things you can do if you're in a group is uh, what's called a set draft. Yep. Uh, for those unfamiliar, basically, you guys, everybody pools their money and you buy a whole bunch of one particular set. Then you open them all up at the convention, sort out uh, sort out all the parts, and basically everybody gets to draw numbers, and then one at a time, the numbers are read off, and basically everybody takes a turn picking out a lot, dumps it into their bag, those parts are yours. And uh, it's a good way to get uh, a lot of uh, rare pieces, especially in the case of the Brickheads. I know we parted out... Um, ah, 
ah, shoot, what was the one? It was on sale at Toys R Us. Um, uh, either way, um, Anders, Ale Clum Productions, he walked away with a boatload of uh, ingot pieces in gray. Okay. That was that was the part to get, and he drew number one. Okay. So yeah, it's it's definitely a fun experience. You know, it's you know even if you don't get the best stuff, it's still just fun to do. There's something about it. Yeah. And then what are they? Are those brick heads? Are they ten or fifteen dollars? Are they what? What's the price point on those? Twenty ten to twenty dollars, depending oh. if they're like two of them. Oh okay okay. Oh yeah. I honestly, I'm so out of it. I have not been in a Lego store for a while. They haven't raised the price on pick a brick cups, have they? I don't think so. I actually, so they used to, I think, take a, a dollar off if you brought in an old cup to refill. I think it was 50 cents or 20 I, I think they've cents. lowered it to 50 cents now. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. That's kind of disappointing. Huh. Yeah, and another thing I wanted to bring up is the amount of minifigures that Lego is producing of just different, you know, movies or whatever just the sheer amount of minifigures they're making and i don't blame them because that's like their most popular thing now but like it's pretty crazy oh um sorry but since you're talking about minifigures did you see the new harry potter minifigures ah the not. medium yeah. leg. yes yeah, those new legs those are interesting brick filmers have been demanding that for a long time yes I even yeah. had to resort to a custom legs. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much we had to kind of make our own if we wanted to uh, make like short figs or kids basically that don't look like they're hopping around when they walk. I, I believe a Brotherhood workshop uh, used also used them. Uh, they're from the Brick Fortress. Those are uh, those uh, little legs. Ah, oh, that's what that's called. I'm assuming what you guys are talking about is they came out with poseable short legs. Yes. Yes. Really. Technically, they're they're considered by Lego to be medium legs because I, th I think they just released an image today, basically comparing the uh, the sizes where they're still going to be producing like the short like kid legs, but then the uh, the medium legs are somewhere in between normal legs and the short non posable ones. Okay, so they're still going to be those non posable ones. Yes. Yep. Okay. Interesting. What is this? What would I type in to search that up? I can't seem to find those. Uh, here, I can get you a link right here. Okay. Oops. Didn't copy over right. Oh, that's a book. Okay, I was like, what is this? And... Boom. There you go. Yeah, it shows a picture of um, whatever the dwarf hogwarts professor is next to harry potter in the middle with the uh, the medium legs and then i think that's cedric diggory on the right okay I see those. let me share this for everyone that that's watching this is what we're looking at here so the middle one's actually poseable and uh, a little bit taller to accommodate for those hips interesting Gotta i did not the, know that yeah, because if you if you look at the the other legs, I'm not sure they could make them that small again, no. simply because you have to have the hip joint there. Yep, that's a good move on their part, so they could keep that old piece, and they just came out with a new one. Yeah, I much prefer seeing them do things like that because I know um, a piece that I think is going away soon is the old flower stem piece. Uh, really? With the anti stud on the bottom. I think they're replacing it with the one that has like the peg on the bottom from uh, from the downtown diner set. Oh. So that now, if you actually want to stick something like that to a plate, you actually have to ha buy a, a second piece, which is like that little leaf or uh, whatever those little like leaf stud things from the Minecraft sets are. Okay. And then stick the the flower mm -hmm. stem into that which kind of stinks. And uh, the discontinuation of that would explain why I, I think actually uh, at one point in one of Ryan's vlogs, you can actually see us fighting like animals over this box of the old stem pieces that was at the oh, Lego I'm store. I'm so tired oh, of this God. brick world story. Kill me now, oh, oh, please. Oh, 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 I was going to wait till he was done. Then Austin had to butt in. 
Oh my god. Oh, best entrance ever. As so always. over that story now. <laughs> oh, oh man. Well, I guarantee you most people here have not heard it. So uh poo for you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um I'll I'm gonna like be intermittent, like muting and not muting because I have friends over, but what's up everybody? <laughs> what's up? Hey, what's up? Going? Where are my manners? How's it going, Austin? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude, the man, the legend, Keemstar himself. It's been a while. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> I need some fried chicken here, please. <laughs> this is going so well, then Austin had to join. <laughs> <laughs> I, I anticipated nothing less than No, than I, I knew this would happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So Austin, are you attending Brick Fair? I am, yeah. Me and Trev actually just uh, finished getting the last of the hotel uh, things all sorted out. So. Okay. Are you staying at the one right there or a different one? No, I'm going to be staying at, uh, I think, one of the Wingate hotels. I can't stand the Holiday Inn. It's crazy. Okay. Yeah. That's where all the party is, even though I live like... Well, I don't have a hotel. I, I'm not mm. even sure if I can go or not. Marcus, Dude, you don't need a hotel. Like you live, like, there. right there. Job. Marcus, you better come up with a really good excuse, because I know you can get time off work. Uh, <laughs> come on, dude. But he you doesn't want to. Five days. Uh, I, I, I will do, I will do, I'll do what I can. I'll do what I can. And go for the private days. It's literally days exactly better anyways. Days. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm searching up. It's uh, $65, if I'm reading this correctly. Sounds right. Yeah. Not bad. Problem is, Marcus, I'm not going to be there much of the private days, so... Oh, well, then, looks like... Are you there for only public days, Bean? Uh, more or less. Okay. I guess I'll see you Friday night, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Friday night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'll probably come to the mall, because why not? I don't know. I mean, that's, that's the thing you kind of do during conventions anyways. Everybody just kind of, you know, piles into, you know, the local people's cars and yep. drives out to the mall. Yep. And then drives out to the Lego store, and then I'm gonna be like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah, that was me this past uh, Brick World trying to fit like five to six people in a Mustang, which is supposed to sit four. Oh boy! Oh god! Yeah. Oh dear! Sounds like sounds like Cuba all over again. Yeah, straddling the law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. Oh man! Well, Austin, you missed some good topics. I missed some what? Some some good topics. Oh man, what do we talk about? Have you seen Drama, the new, probably? No, the U, the new YouTube play button. Have you seen that? No, I have not. <laughs> How has no one seen yeah, it? Dude, you're you're, yeah, you're I don't seen it either. I, I don't know, man. You're something else, Payne. You're something else. <laughs> I guess. What house, guys? Um, yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't seen it. Google it. All right. Let's get some reaction here. All right, hang on. I'll be right back. Don't be dramatic, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Headset user warning. I can already tell you now. Oh, in can, the meantime, how's everyone's? I know some of you guys are animating now. Stuart, Marcus? Question mark. Yes. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm actually having trouble trying to figure out these. Like, well, it's not really export settings, but like, um. Exporting through um, what do you call it? Dragon Frame. Okay. Like uh -huh. it's either Windows A AVI or like QuickTime Uncompressed, and like the colors are totally different for each. And I'm like, oh my god, what the? Yeah. Yeah. And I think uh, QuickTime is like the better one from what I'm seeing. Okay. Stuart, what do you use to put all your photos together? Uh, I use uh, Sony Vegas as basically my main editing pro editing software. I also use uh, After Effects for additional effects like uh, chroma key and all other uh, more complicated stuff that uh, Sony Vegas can't can't handle or can't do. I I don't use uh, a frame capture program unfortunately, but uh, I'm going to buy Dragon Frame in the future. Yes, do it. Wait, oh what was God, the most recent post for this uh, for the for the play button? What was that? What was the most like recent post for like the play button? I can send you over Discord a picture if you want. Yeah, so I'm looking for it now. I'm just seeing all the old ones. Yeah, here you go. Let's see. Right here. 
There you go. Ew. So you want one now? <laughs> no. No. It's like it's like the, the left was like conserve trees, make it <laughs> eco friendly. <laughs> oh. Eco friendly, oh man. I don't know. But anyway. Not, not, not the greatest. Didn't mean to bring in politics. That was the first thing that came to my head. Um, yeah, that's my job. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, not this good, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, I said it looked like uh, someone stepped on it. <laughs> <laughs> stepped on the old one. It's very accurate. Oh, let's see. Here. Yeah, so... I guess, Stuart, I have another question for you. So you take all your photos, put them into Sony, make that a video, and then you take it and you put it in your other software to do any overlaid edits you want to, right? Uh, yeah, sometimes it is the case and sometimes uh, it isn't. Mostly um, during the... Uh, in the brick film uh, Lego War, the Battle of Mobile, especially that uh, that spare uh, those uh, space battle scenes, I had to use uh, After Effects extensively, uh, like for example with uh, with the with the blue screens and such. And uh, it was actually the first time that I um, that I used After Effects in such a scale. So it was uh, it was actually a huge experiment. That was okay. actually really nicely done. Like I, I know I've told you before, but uh, yeah. that was probably the most impressive part about that film. It was the only impressive part of the film. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, for uh, Outbreak uh, 3, I'm currently experimenting with uh, lighting, actually. Uh, I, I bought some uh, bricks, of, uh, bricks of lights, and uh, I want to experiment it. Experiment I with saw that. things you were putting on Imgur, and, or not Imgur, but uh, what was it? Flickr? What was it? Yeah, Flickr, right? Yeah, Flickr. Uh, yeah, I also post on uh, Discord uh, once in a while. Wait, yeah, wait, no, I, no, I, wait, I, I, wait. Yeah, yeah, via Flickr. Yeah. Like, oh my God, those are that's some really nice lighting. I'm like, holy cow. Yeah, so I try to um, experiment on that. So in this case, I basically use two different cameras. Uh, the main camera I use, the, the the crappy old one I I use for almost ten years, and a DSLR for uh, mostly for the dark. You know what? What currently has the best lighting right now of any brick film, and it's not even out yet. <laughs> one that we should never watch. Uh, uh, God, Great Republic. God. Really, the best lighting <laughs> I've ever seen. Uh, dude that trailer was so hype not gonna lie that uh, okay austin here's what? the thing like whenever i see a video with your face in it i don't watch it if it's not your face that's totally valid that's totally valid and so i saw just like the default thumbnail that just randomly is created you know whenever you're like panning around or whatever yeah. And I was like, ooh, let's watch this. And I watched that. It's like your update video. Then I actually watched the trailer and I was like, this is this looks promising if he pulls through. Dude, it's 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 essentially done. Like I'm just okay. waiting on voices. I need to film two more scenes and Matt's gonna be done the CGI very, very soon. So no, it'll be done it'll be done on time. Like yeah, literally I... we're at we're at like six minutes already of the film being done. Oh wow, I thought it'd be shorter. Having worked on this with him, you know, a bit, you know, especially with respect to the CGI, I can attest to this. This will actually see the light of day. Okay. Rip GOC. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rip GOC did. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no, that 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 film will get done. And plus, I've sunk. Granted, I haven't. I didn't sink as much money into Theta Squad as I did GOC. But even so, Theta Squad is uh, probably around like the. It costs me like I think four forty right now. That's what I'm at. That's not even like on top of what uh, I have to pay Matt when everything's said and done. <laughs> so it's gonna, bill comes to it's, 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 it's gonna be like it's gonna be like six hundred dollars at the end of the day. So oh my god, <laughs> oh dear. Go big or go home. Yeah, dude. Literally, dude, they don't. They literally don't call me the cinematography god for nothing. Let's oh, be real boy. here. Let's be real. And you, you can't deny that. You can't. You absolutely cannot. I'm not going to confirm or deny it. Well, I mean, you can't. You don't really watch stop motion. It's not really in your thing. Well, 
We're, we'll talk after stream if you're still. Oh, 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 no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, you heard it here. Oh, no. You got a new perks over into the community. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. He's oh. here. It's been like what? Five, ten years, but he's here. Yeah, it's I was cool. going to say, like, when I was like five, <laughs> I maybe did one. I don't know. <laughs> Dude, I, oh, dude, the test animations are making a comeback. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> God damn it. I swear. Those three God. seconds, dude. Those getting like. Oh, mad. my God. <laughs> Yo, I remember that. Peyton was, or not Peyton. Austin was like so triggered. Dude, I still am. There's no reason. There's no freaking reason why three seconds should get that much. Dude, this one has 5K views and it's two seconds long. <laughs> <laughs> dude it's, it's actually a good video, video though. though don't worry i'll link yeah, it to you boys <laughs> <laughs> not gonna lie my man if you know you are you are good at building mocks you you combine that into some really cool looking set design you could uh, you could have something pretty great on your hands just yeah. remember yeah, yeah. And I disagree i disagree it's oh, like oh, it's like it's like ryan making mocks right now Oh. So like I don't know. <laughs> okay, oh that, uh -oh. wow. that's quite the backhanded compliment. No, no, no. It's like 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 Ryan is notorious for not making mocks, and when he makes them, they're bad. It's like me making mocks. When I make them, they're terrible. That's why I do animation only. <laughs> Fair point. So you know, like like it'll be like I don't know. It'll be interesting, although. Kane has a ton of like business sense, so like I would be really surprised if he managed to somehow mess it up. From a business sense, stop motions make zero sense. Oh yeah, yeah, oh. business wise, yeah. yeah. Unless but you're for... like Stuart over here getting a couple million views, then it's like, oh okay, now now we're talking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, unless you're unless you're Forrest or something or Zach. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Ben and Andy, dude, can we talk about that? Oh Ooh. my god. Did you did none of you watch the new Ben and Andy from Zach? Yeah, that, that that brick film was fantastic. Oh my God, that was awesome! I swear to yeah, God, if, God, if there's somebody I idolize there, it's Keshin's ability to do so many different voices. Wait, I what, thought it was his ability to be an elitist prick and never respond to anything, but that's just me. Whoa! <laughs> KP was you weren't lying. Oh my God! I don't I don't know the guy personally, but I'm a fan of his tweets, so I'll leave him alone. <laughs> Oh. Oh man, Corbin, I hit this. I hit this cart, dude. Now it now it's showing a health bar. Do you have C four? Do you have C four at all? Uh, oh, okay. Austin, your mic's hot. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be right back, guys. Multitasking. I don't know animating. If I could just take pictures and give them to someone and they do the rest, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not how it works. <laughs> well, I mean, it kind of is pain, but I don't even think you have the budget to pay someone to do that. Because no one would do it unless you paid them. I mean, you're pretty cheap, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. No, he's not wrong. He's, he, <laughs> dude, I, when it comes to pain, I'm a total sellout for him. So <laughs> he knows that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be talking after stream. Oh my god. Oh, no. After stream was <laughs> best time. It's going to be best. <laughs> oh boy. You got a really decent circle, Corbin. Oh god. That's my mic. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I personally think with my mock that I have going now, it's small enough where there's a couple scenes. I don't know if you guys don't know, but I'm building D-Day, right? Mm -hmm. And the beach is, it's like maybe 100 studs long. So if I wanted to do a full-on clip of the soldiers running that beach, it'd take a while. But I could, there's a way you could trick the, the viewers. So like, you know, one scene they're running and now they're already there. So it's not like, it'd be a bunch of cuts, but I mean, that's just a bunch of scenes. So I see nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you can totally get it done. And I don't know, like, I think I could get the scenes done. It's like I said, I just have no idea how to stitch the the uh, clips together. Everyone talks about FPS. I I understand the concept, but 
the way I've always animated, it's like, just, just keep taking pictures. I, I don't know. I'm assuming, okay, let's say 20 frames a second. If I take 157 photos and you end up, let's say in Sony Vegas, you clip those together at that rate of 20 FPS, that's just going to determine how many seconds, you know, the overall film is. Oh no, when it comes to a good animation, frame rate doesn't matter, doesn't always matter. You also need to use the, the, the stop motion techniques, like the ease in and ease out to exactly. make the animation a bit, yeah. a bit smoother. As, so long it, as, you're, as long as you're getting above 12, yes. it'll look, it'll look half decent, if nothing else. Okay. I mean, I use, I use 15 VPS and it's fine by me. Uh, I mean, you can use uh, 24 or, um, or 19 but uh if if you want to start with the uh, animation go with uh, go with 12 first then 15 and if you uh if you're up for the challenge then go uh, 24 or even 30. so you say up for the challenge what's the challenge well because um because twen because 24 requires more pictures uh okay. the, the techniques are also kind of different uh, i believe uh people who uh, who use uh, 24 fps uh mostly um take uh, take two so basically um each movement they take they uh, take two pictures so uh, okay. yeah it's called 24 on twos and it, it yeah, essentially yeah, it's the same thing one. getting at 12 fps okay yeah i also saw an animation with 60 uh fps really uh, yeah that's crazy yeah it was uh, i believe an, an a test animation with a tank just rolling around. <laughs> so yeah, that was pretty insane. So I'm trying to wrap my head around this. I have a minifigure in my hand. If I'm shooting at, let's say, just for talking purposes, 20 FPS, I would just, let's say I just want to make him wave. I would just move his hand as little as I can, in my personal opinion, and then, you know, using the ease in, ease out technique. But is there something that I have to think about as I'm taking pictures, knowing that I'm going to be doing 20 FPS? Um... So, typically speaking, you know, a good thing to have in mind when you're animating is having just kind of a set walk cycle and run cycle. It's a shame Austin's not here right now to talk about this because yeah. he's himself the god. <laughs> he of always does cycle. that. And I'll grant him, he does have a really good walk cycle that I cannot seem to replicate for the life of me. Okay. Um, but basically, it's it's a standardized thing. So, you know, again, whatever your frame rate that you're using, you know, have that, and then everything kind of flows from there, essentially. Okay. You know, again, if you have, if, you know, if, if what you have is a bunch of guys storming a beach, then essentially... Again, you just have this this cycle, you know, of poses that you just repeat over and over and over again, and then it just ends up looking natural and organic when uh, when you play it back. So let's say, like you said, running. If I had like five guys running around, just it's going to take. The whole point is it's practice knowing that okay, if I want to move his right leg, these are where I take the pictures, and it'll get me this result. Um, so I'm not mm. sure I quite fully understood what you were saying there, okay. but from what it sounds like, I, I would probably say yes. Is that again? You again? It's 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 all in sequence. You know, again, yeah. usually you know it's 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 have like one frame minifig is standing straight up. Next frame, he sticks his you know, like left leg out. You know, next frame after that, he straddles the two studs with both legs kind of uh, posed outward, and then next one. He puts that first foot down on the ground, kicks the other leg out, and then last frame goes back to standing. Uh, and then, of course, you would also probably want to do something with swinging the arms, unless they were carrying a weapon, which in your case, they would be. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, you know, there's there's tons of great tutorials all over the internet. Uh, Fancy Pants does a great tutorial for a basic walk cycle and run cycle at 15 frames per second. That's the one I would say is most commonly used. Um, okay. You know, um, I think Austin's actually, I think Austin animates at a really odd frame rate sometimes. I think like I think 16, he used 17 19, or 18 19, frames 19, per second. 17. It's, it's a yeah. really odd one. And, and I think what that does is it allows him to get that extra, that extra frame that he includes somewhere in the walk cycle. 
uh-huh. I think towards like the end, he kind of does two poses for like halfway over the the straddling the studs. Okay. But uh, yeah, and then there's also you know run cycles, which again like maybe instead of just sticking the leg out, then you move the whole figure a stud forward. And it looks funky when you're doing it, but when you play it back, it's all moving so fast that you you can't even tell. Okay, so I just sent a link in the Discord. What do you think that FPS is? This is like, this guy, I he's not lo- no longer doing YouTube, but I love his animations. Oh, shit. Oh, so I would say that's probably at least 12, if not 15. Okay. It's interesting because his walk cycle is not conventional. It almost looks a little bit more like a, a skip. Okay. Um, or actually, yeah, it almost kind of looks like he's straddling uh, a whole stud length instead of just kind of having uh, both legs, uh, one one out, one back between uh-huh. two studs. Uh, he's actually straddling a full stud, which maybe that's why it looks kind of more like a, a hop skip type thing. Okay. But... Yeah, this looks at at least at least uh, twelve. Like if if this is what you were shooting for, it would it would definitely be passable for for a good animation. Okay, and I guess a question for you. I'm just trying to think through what I'd have to do. Is okay. I have a scene where my camera's at ground level, and you see, you know, a bunch of soldiers running across a beach, right? Right. How? Yep. Where? Mm-hmm. So I guess this is animator dependent. Everyone would have their own opinion, but where would I set the focus to be? Oh, yeah. Because it could be on the soldier closest to you, or I could change it so it starts at the furthest away and slowly focuses in on the closest one. Or So I'm... typically you would want to keep your focus for a shot like that consistent throughout. The only time yeah. a focus really ever changes in cinematography is when you do a deliberate focus pull. Like, exactly. say, two figures are having a conversation. Uh, the closer one, you're looking over their shoulder. Uh, when they start talking, the, you know, it switches the focus from one character to the other. Yeah. But otherwise, you want to kind of keep it consistent. Okay. As far as which figure you should have the focus on, what I would probably do in that case is if so, you know, if you were making a, a brick film proper with a story and everything, you had a narrative, you would probably want to focus on the most relevant character in question, I would yeah, think. The, the protagonist of the story. Yep. And but since you're not doing that, um, like there's an end result. Everyone knows what happens in this case for what right. I would do. And so what, what I might recommend in that case is just, uh, you know, crank up the F stop maybe. Okay. So that you, that you get as much of it in, in good focus as you can. Um, and, and, and beyond that, if that doesn't look good, then, you know, just kind of play around with it, you know, okay. take test shots. Austin is, you know, renowned for taking like <laughs> 60 to a hundred test shots before he's happy with the way a scene looks. Yeah. Then he actually starts animating. Okay. So yeah. yeah, definitely play around with it. Take your time with it because the more time you give it, the better it's going to look usually. Yeah. So let's see. I guess another, I'm just thinking of, there's like a set amount of issues and knowledge gap that has stopped me from doing stop motions. I have nothing wrong with them. I, quite enjoy seeing a finished product but these are good good answers to some questions i've had and another one is okay with the current lens i have on my camera with some of these close-up shots the camera itself has to be pretty far away for it to focus um do i want a macro lens or am i just not playing with my settings correctly Ooh, it really depends for me because I'm so far I'm u- I'm only using a kit lens for uh, for when I u- when I use my DSLR for stop motions. So as am I. Same. Yeah. What, what do you mean kit lens? The ones that came with the camera? The, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah the one that came so, with the camera. Yeah, and and also what's kind of you know unique about that is that basically it has a zoom on it, whereas so 
the best lenses for stop motion are probably the like like old uh, Nikon manual yeah, the vintage, lenses, the vintage uh, lenses, yeah, vintage ones. Because yeah. basically, the newer DS uh, DSLRs are designed um, to interface with the lens uh, via electronics, and so basically, you set the the f stop, you know, the aperture and whatnot in the camera's digital settings, mm -hmm. and then from there, the camera basically you know, sets all the settings up for the lens and it just operates dynamically. The problem with that, which Things I haven't change. experienced in spite of using a kit lens myself, is that sometimes you can get a little bit of flicker that's created because a lens is a mechanical thing and, you know, mechanical things don't always line up 100% every time. Mm -hmm. So when the aperture closes each time, it could be just slightly different uh, of a position that lets in just enough light for you to notice a, a, a considerable difference um and when you play that back it might have a little bit of flicker in it uh you don't get that with the manual lenses because you adjust the aperture yourself so basically it's locked in that position the entire time there's ways to screw around with uh, an automatic lens you know by like putting like a piece of tape in between the electrical contacts um like after you've set where it's supposed to be that I haven't played around with myself. I didn't want to screw up my brand new camera that I got last May. But yeah, I would say as far as doing like extreme close-up shots, for that you might want a uh, you might want a macro. I also think that they uh, they make kind of like I forget what they're called. Basically, it's it's like a single like kind of like eyeglass piece effectively that goes over the lens and basically it you know blows up the image that much more yeah it's not going to be the same quality as a true macro lens but oh, um... those things are incredibly cheap and uh if you only have a couple shots that you're doing that way you know for an amateur stop motion if the image quality isn't godly, that's okay. You know, yeah. it's been a year. I'm still learning how to properly animate with my DSLR. Okay, and I guess I was looking at Austin's trailer. I mean, he's got some, I don't know if you'd call them close-up shots or not, but, like, it's basically just one minifigure in the frame. That's about all I would be doing as far as being close-up. I believe he's using more uh, lenses, so... I think he recently got a new one. Okay, but I'm not sure uh, which which uh, lens, which new lens he got. Okay. Yeah, from what I'm seeing there, I think you can. I, I, I'm pretty sure he actually does use a kit lens. At least currently, I'm not aware of any new lenses that he's bought. Um, you should be able to get away with that with a kit lens, what you might need to do is, so the way DSLRs work, um, you have like a, a minimum focal distance yeah. that you have to be at. So what you might need to do is back the camera up and then kind of zoom in on, um, on you know, your the thing that you're focusing on yeah. in order to get it nice and crisp, but also to the, the distance that you want to be at. Okay. All right, yeah, because right now, let's see here. Yeah, any other questions? No, I got one here. Let's. I need to send this for reference. <laughs> I know the answer, but I want to hear your guys' answer. All right. You think, you think I could beat that stop motion? <laughs> uh, let's, uh, oh, let's, I don't know. But... 2011, dude. I was 11 years old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh... Okay, well, I would you say. You can totally beat this. The two, the two most glaring yeah. issues with this are the camera stability. Yeah, I know, I, I know. I know. Don't even worth a mind. Things are easy fixes, so I would say, yeah, yeah, you could probably yeah, be. Yeah, you can do better. After after seeing that practice one, oh man, no, you you can. Do oh yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah, and you you get somebody to hook you up with, uh, you know, uh, with special effects, you know, muscle flashes and whatnot, you know. It cough, cough, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, now I'm now I'm getting hyped.
go for it, man. I mean, see, that's that's the thing. You know, I am the only, the first and only ever Rick Filmer in Rebel Lug at the moment. And, um, well, technically, Danny, like a buff productions, tried to make a, uh, a stop motion in the past. And the project dragged on and he ran, this, uh, ran into some problems with just horrible flicker. He wasn't sure what was causing it. Uh, might have actually been the, uh, the fluorescent lights that he was using uh, to light his set. Okay. But, uh, he ended up abandoning the project, and I'm kind of slowly trying to nudge him, like, "Hey, man, you know, give, give it another try. You know, you're a little bit older now, a little bit wiser. Go for it. Mm-hmm. You know, guys with guys with the building skill and the co- and the the parts collection to, you know, create really awesome set designs. I'd say go for it because yeah, really I the can... only time you see that kind of thing is, you know. Who did that? Uh, that the uh, the solo trailer recreation for for Lego it was a commission. Uh, was that Brotherhood Workshop? Might have been. Uh, yeah, either way, true. they you know when when a commission you know when somebody who's really good at animating does a commission like that, they get supplied usually a bunch of parts for it from Lego so that they can you know build accurate looking sets, especially if it's trailer recreation, and uh, you know. That's, you know, because they have the parts to do it. That's really the only time you ever see that. Yeah. Um, I would put more effort into my own set design because I do have the parts collection to do it. I'm just a little lazy. And after a while, it does get exhausting. If you're trying to do a full length brick film like Zero Hour, it's just like, all right, you know what? This is just two by fours. But for all intents and purposes, you get what this is supposed to be. This is supposed to be the Geonosian Arena. All right, done. Moving on. (laughs) So correct me if I'm wrong, but what you're saying is set design's half the battle, or it can be. Not necessarily, but it can okay. be the difference between an average brick film and a really incredible brick film. At okay. least, at least from my perspective, because what I tend to notice in the brick filming community, uh, and and maybe this is just me, you know, I'm not trying to stereotype or anything like that. But what tends to be the case commonly is that people who are interested in brick filming you know, maybe they would like to be interested in mock building, but they don't have the parts collection for that. You can do a lot of interesting stuff with a small Lego collection if you are an animator, because what the subject of interest is, is the animation itself. What What is this character? What is this figure doing in the shot? That's what makes it interesting. Yeah. What makes it twice as interesting is if it is done on an immersive set where it actually feels like you're in an actual, you know, Lego world. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's definitely something I've been trying to build on with, uh, you, you know, you guys may have seen Zero Hour. There was the uh, those gunships that were in there, I think, with the exception of one shot, they were all CG. And, I don't uh, think I've seen that. Or if I have, I don't know what we're talking about. I can link you. Okay. One sec. Boom. Oh, I, so, I recognize the thumbnail. I'll have to watch this. Yeah, it happens within about like a minute in where you start seeing the uh, the gunships flying. Some of the chroma key work definitely needs improvement, but uh, those, those were actually some of the first shots that I animated. So um, I was still kind of trying to get the hang of uh, a chroma keying setup. But uh, yeah, it's really neat because I couldn't really figure out a way to get, you know, that, you know, big and immersive of a wide shot, you know, with just ships flying through the air. There's there's no way I could have uh, done rig removal with that. Forget it. And uh, as far as the, you know, the perspective change as the ship flies across the screen, After Effects, just, you know, taking a still of an image and, you know, animating it, you know, with compositing, that wasn't going to work either. So... You know, in spite of the fact that you can sometimes see a little blue halo at the edge of the uh, the set, yeah, it still looks really good in my opinion. No, yeah, I'm watching it now. It looks good. So with that CG, I just watched the gunships fly. Did you have to build the those gunships in what Blender or something? So there's a number of uh, programs that you can use to model Lego in 3D now. Um, for that, that was actually easy. I just found a, uh, a 3D model of a gunship online that was, uh, well, technically it was a, it was an LDD model that I found on the old LDD gallery before they shut it down. That's okay. like a digital designer for those unfamiliar. 
Um, and basically from there, it lets you export to the LDRAW file format. Yeah. And then from there, you can open it up in a program like LeoCAD that accepts LDRAW files. And then from there, export it to 3DS uh, or Wavefront or whatever, whatever your preferred format is. And then from there, you can just load it into Blender and everything is right there for you. So if I wanted to build like a tank or something that I probably couldn't find a file for, I could just do it in LDD and I'll be in business. Yeah. As far as something like a tank, I would probably say that LDD is probably your best bet. You know, hopefully going from there to LeoCAD to Blender, that kind of general pipeline. Because I think for, you know, something like tank treads, that's going to be a lot easier to do in uh, in Lego Digital Designer simply because, you know, they actually have like snaps and stuff. Yeah. Whereas LeoCAD is just kind of a primitive CAD program as is uh, Mechabricks. That's a browser-based one. You can actually like go to mechabricks.com. Uh, I'll post what that is in the chat for those interested. What it's called. And uh, the, the interesting thing about that one is that you can actually, that, that one accepts LDD files too, I think. And that actually exports the bricks with the, uh, with the little Lego logo on the studs. So I've okay. been playing around with that recently. Uh, unfortunately, I can't go back and fix some of my legacy models, uh, being yeah. some of the older UCS scale Star Wars stuff. But uh, okay, yeah. Sorry, I'm intensely watching this stop motion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it. So, what FPS was this made at? This was at 15. Okay. Yeah, just the the standard 15. All right. Well, I'm not going to end the conversation here, but I'm going to end the live stream. So, let me look in the chat. See here. Let's see, guys, if you have any quick questions, feel free to drop them now because I'm about to wrap this up. We're at an hour and over 20 minutes. So. So for those, I mentioned this before I went live, but I'd like to make these live streams come back every Saturday. I will not be able to do one next weekend because I'll be in California for Bricks by the Bay. However, hopefully after that, we can continue doing it. Around this time, we'll have to figure out between all of our schedules what works the best. But uh, today it seemed to work out pretty good. Yeah, I had fun. Yeah. I know Stuart being in a quite the different time zone we'll have to yeah, work like with him four, a, four in the morning yeah Ouch. yeah yeah that's nothing that's nothing what the hell do you need to be so edgy <laughs> <laughs> all right well i think we're gonna end it here guys thanks for everyone that came yeah. out once again let's go through briefly where everyone can find all you guys matt you can start us off once again Yep. All right, so I am Bricktail Studios. Uh, that's tail with T A L E, is in like a story. And uh, I'm on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter at the moment. Uh, yeah, check me out, guys. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Yeah, remember, right. it's Bricktail Studios, not production. Oh, man. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, uh, he screwed up my name in the credits of one of his, uh, his films. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, I that. Yeah. All right, Marcus. You can find me at Marcus Foon on YouTube. That is spelled Marcus with a C and then P H O O N. Awesome. And then Stuart. Well, I'm Star Wars Studio 100. Just uh, Star Wars Studio 100 uh, without without uh, spaces. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Flickr. I don't have Instagram, and uh, yeah, that's about it. All right, and then of course myself, the channel you're watching this on, Clonechbrex39. Instagram's X39 Brick Customs, and add me on Snapchat, X39 Brick Customs. I'm trying to post behind the scenes pictures on that more and more. So I'll put links to all these guys' channels in the description once this video is not a live stream. So I'll do that here in a minute. But thanks for coming out, everyone. Thank you guys for joining me here on the live stream once again. It's a pleasure being on. Yeah. yeah so I'm you very on. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we can do these more often. So, all right, guys, I'm going to call it there. Thanks everyone. Once again, I'll see you next time.